believe you have re, you you're entitled to 10 minutes of oral argument. If you wouldn't mind putting your your name on the record, please. Um, I'm the executor and sole beneficiary of the trust and estate of Mr. Kevin Dwayne Craft, the legal persona. Well, Mr. Estate of Mr. Kevin Dwayne Craft, the legal persona, what level of stupidity will you be taking us to today? Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we have a sovereign citizen who's done the unthinkable and taken his case all the way up to the Michigan Court of Appeals. Not because of his right to travel or any normal sovereign citizen argument, but for his right to be a deadbeat dad and how the state has no jurisdiction to make him take responsibility for his kids. So let's begin. I'm not here making a general appearance. I'm here by special divine appearance uh, judge to settle a matter um, to call for a constitutional court of record to ask for a summary judgment upon the truth and facts that I placed upon the record with my documents. I stand firmly on my rights um, and I'm here to ask for that summary judgment, please. You've asked for it. Um, I do also have a few questions. Um, the I understand your pro se, mm -hmm. and then therefore you get a little bit of leeway, mm -hmm. but typically the judges don't answer questions. We're the ones who ask questions. This is not, this isn't like a trial court mm -hmm. where it's a very kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, the court of appeals is, is more structured in terms of the lawyers or parties come up, they make their arguments. Uh, the judges may or may not have questions for the person and then it's submitted and then we go back and discuss the matter and then at some point in the future we come out with an opinion so it, it is different in that respect than trial court uh, understood um but i am wondering if this is a court of constitution and would the constitution be applied in these proceedings um the court of appeals the michigan court of appeals is provided for under the state uh, constitution of 1963. is that a yes that's the answer I'm giving you. Oh, um, okay. Um, I'm asking to verify to make sure these proceedings are legitimate. Um, the Constitution has two jurisdictions, common law, admiralty law, or maritime tribute. Um, and I'm asking in uh, which context would this court uh, try to enforce jurisdiction on me? Hold on. You're the one that brought this case to the Michigan Court of Appeals. Are you really now arguing whether they have jurisdiction or not? And to answer your question, the context, as you put it, by which the court has jurisdiction over you is both personal and statutory and written into both the United States Constitution and the Michigan State Constitution. We're acting under the state constitution of Michigan of 1963. I'm moving forward. I'm here to pretty much address the court's error for ignoring my motions. Um, notice of dismissal, default judgment uh, under federal rule 55 was filed December 12, 2022. Under federal rule 55, if a party fails to respond to the defendants themselves, and this is confirmed by my affidavits um, and other means, the clerk must uh, officially record a default judgment of that party. Um, I filed several motions and they were um, ignored. That's why I'm here. In Haynes versus Kenar, 404 U.S. 519-1972, courts must be understanding and, e and not easily reject motions from people just representing themselves. And that's what took place in this matter. But is it though? In Haynes v. Kerner, the courts found that a defendant's claims of civil rights violations can't just be dismissed without giving the defendant an opportunity to provide proof of the allegations. I mean, I'm sure that you probably filed a bunch of frivolous motions, and I'm sure they probably were all denied. And in your diluted state of blissful paint consumption, you somehow equated your situation to an actual civil rights violation. Um, in Article 1, Section 17 of the Michigan Constitution prevents courts from ignoring motions and, um, and guarantees that people have a fair chance to represent themselves in any argument and evidence. That did not happen. That's why we're here. The state um, ordered me to take a paternity test um, and Monell versus Department of Social Services um, which, is a United, uh, which is a New York State case. The Supreme Court case established that uh, 
municipalities liability under the uh, section 1983 for constitutional violations in the context of child support cases, where the appellant argues that a warrant should be required for me obtaining genetic and biological material. I think it's very sensitive when a state injects an order asking me to give genetic and biological material without a warrant. Um, that's really sensitive material. It's not like a document or anything. That's personal biological material. That's why those specimens were not um, granted. That's why I deny any consent or any contract with the state or Title IV D agency to give away my biological and genetic material. Oh, so that's what this is all about. You don't want to take care of your kids and pay them child support, so you went full soft city it. Uh, that the case Monell is relevant because it underscores the importance to ensure that government agencies like the friend of the court on this context, these are for-profit agencies disguised as government agencies like the friend of the court adhere to constitutional standards where collecting evidence potentially implying the need of procedure safeguards to protect individuals for amendment. That's why I asked with this a constitutional court. Um, the asking for genetic material is protected by my Fourth Amendment right. <clears throat> the Fourth Amendment protects individuals from unreasonable searches and seizures and safeguards one privacy and assurance that any such search is conducted within the boundaries of legal requirements. Well, there's your first problem. Michigan compiled laws, Act 205, otherwise known as the Parenting Act, codifies the legality of the state to procure your DNA in cases like these, the methods by which your DNA would be retrieved, and the punishments for failure to participate. I see that they're not here today, and, you know, that's some questions that uh, are raised, um, and those were my concerns. On August 11, 2022, the Kent County um, ordered an appointment for me for genetic and biological biological testing um in a testing laboratory in a, in a testing laboratory excuse me dna diagnostic center is a business and i can prove it's a business because i have their done in brad street numbers eight seven seven one eight four two two six for the record um they also said when i, I thought this was funny um the state of michigan stated that it would pay the cost of the genetic test and if i wasn't excluded that I will be responsible for that cost. And with, with that being said, uh, that set alarms. Let me guess, you had the oh shit alarm go off. Like, oh shit, it's about to cost me more money and they're still gonna find out that I am indeed the father. The state of Michigan is also a business. And with them fronting the cost for me, uh, that, that presented an alarm for me because I don't choose the contract with the state of Michigan. I don't choose to do business with them in this regard with another business. It seems like a coercion of some sort for them to upfront the cost if I was gonna be responsible. I do not consent to that business arrangement. The state, they, they failed, I, uh, they failed to, to show uh, a promissory note of a contract of any sort. Um, I, I submitted documents, notice to the court dismiss, uh, to demand dismissal for lack of jurisdiction, demanded to see an open court evidence of personal and subject matter jurisdiction and notice to notice of court to uh, refusing to appear voluntary. And I do not accept the offer to contract and I do not consent to these proceedings. Um, that affidavit or notice to motion was submitted on, on November 28th, 2022. Um, so again, I, I'm just bringing up the point that I submitted numerous of documents asking for clear evidence or asking for due process, also asking for just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, quite frankly, to be transparent with what's happening. Um, and I, I, I believe I deserve the right to see in writing what gives them the authority and what contract am I entering. I want full disclosure. Asked and answered, MCL 205 gives full transparency over the legality and procedures for which paternity testing should be administered. In Burns 322-BR-719, a creditor must provide proper documentation such as a promissory note contract to substantiate a debt or court claim. They did not. 
more documents I found. Affidavit inserting corporate nature of government entities. Um, I submitted that document um, because I'm concerned that these are for-profit businesses disguised as government agencies. You know, I have proof. Kent County Court, Dun & Bradstreet number for the record, 15290-6082. Kent County Friend of the Court, Dun & Bradstreet number, 60883-3133. State of Michigan, Dun & Bradstreet number, 504698428. These are businesses. I would like to state for the record that I am not a corporation. Yeah, no fucking shit you're not a corporation. You know, I'm about to give this guy the stupid dumb shit information that I didn't need to know of the Day Award. I'm a living, breathing person, human being. With these being businesses, they have to abide by the same rules as other businesses. And may I give an example, for example, McDonald's. McDonald's can't force me to eat their Big Macs. They need my consent. None of these businesses that I've mentioned have my consent to do business with them. <clears throat> Section 458 of the Social Security Act, incentive payments to state. It's a conflict of interest. Um, and it's my argument right here, right now, that the state incentivizes them for, it, 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 it incentivizes them to collect more child support. What the fuck do you think happens when you give child support to the state? It goes to the guardian, dumbass. The state's not a debt collector that buys mother's debts off them for pennies on the dollar. They're more like a mediator that makes sure that pieces of shit like you pay your fucking child support. The the, the main argument I have here and, I, and for you guys is, is, is full disclosure. You know, it seems like they enter me in a contract without my consent, without full disclosure, and that's the problem here. Um, you know, I'm here to argue subject matter and lack of jurisdiction. No evidence was established in my involvement of a common law crime or damages. And I, and I did not commit any common law crime. Um, notice of court to refusing uh, to appear voluntary and I do not accept these contracts and I do not consent to these proceedings was another motion or notice to motion that I submitted 11-28-22. And, um, it's basically it's evidence. It's not, they didn't provide any evidence of an injury or injured party. And um, Mr. Kraft, you're out yes. of time. Um, we understand that you raise issues of disclosure, yes. jurisdiction, remedy. And um, as I indicated, your, your brief, as with all the appellants and appellees we have here today, the briefs that you submit are kind of the key issue that, or the key uh, tool that we use to resolve cases. And so I just want you to know, we have your brief. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go back. Um, we've had research attorneys look at it. We're going to look at it again. We're going to discuss your case. And then you'll get an opinion from us sometime within the next few weeks. If okay? I may, one last thing. Uh, you've got, uh, if you can do it in 20 seconds. I can. The government must prove charges beyond a reasonable doubt with clear evidence, especially when making a claims against someone. And I'm asking you guys right here, right now, they did not provide any evidence against me. And I will ask you to uh, dismiss this without prejudice. I'm going to assume that both the long and short answers are going to be the same. No. All right, so that's the end of the video. Like the judge said, there'll be a decision made in a couple of weeks, and as long as it's public information, you know I'm gonna be there to report the sovereign citizen's loss. So if you liked the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. But don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my content. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.